How wonderful is the Lord our God. He's an awesome God, I'm just telling you. He is an awesome, awesome God. What a joy it is to know him, to serve him, just to be able to bless him and to reach out to him. Whenever you get stressed out and frustrated about life and about your future, even about other folks that are closely connected to your life, whenever you're just stressed out, just remember the Lord is only a thought away. He is only a prayer away. And when you don't have time for a prayer, you can shout the name Jesus. And as soon as you call his name, his presence is immediately brought into your mind. He comes into the situation. The Bible promises that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What an incredible blessing it is just to be able to call upon the name that is above every other name. You know that name is above sickness, it's above disease, it is above debt, it is above disorientation, it's above divorce, it's above confusion. There is power, power in the name of Jesus. And I, I'm, I'm really glad about that name. I, I really am. I'm glad about the name of Jesus and, and the power that it represents to us. And I am always careful that we never become so sophisticated that we learn so many principles and ideas and vocabulary that we neglect to use the simplicity of the power of the name of Jesus. And I just want you to realize that you are already well equipped to fight the good fight of faith. You have the name of Jesus that is a powerful weapon. You have the word of God that is a powerful weapon. You have prayer that is a powerful weapon. You have praise that is an incredible weapon. You have your own testimony, it is a weapon of just reminding yourself what marvelous things that the Lord has already done for you. It's, there's, there's a power in just coming into the understanding of knowing what he has already availed to you. So don't ever neglect to use the power of God that he has given to us in the name of Jesus, in the word of God, in prayer, in praise, in the word of your testimony, in the blood of Jesus. You know the blood is a weapon? You don't have time to do anything else and sometimes they just, the old folks used to do what you call plead the blood. Anybody know anything about pleading the blood? There are some demonic and satanic things in this world that do not respond to logic and teaching. You have to plead the blood in some instances. And I don't ever want us as a people, a spirit-filled people, to ever lose sight of the gift of the Holy Spirit who indwells us and our ability to be able to pray in a heavenly language, to talk in the Holy Ghost. Don't ever neglect that. Don't ever take it for granted. Uh, you are speaking mysteries. You are building up yourself on your most holy faith. It is the Holy Ghost praying through us, making intercession on our behalf. You don't ever know all of the incredible benefits. Don't ever get to the place where you let the devil whisper in your mind, you're not saying anything, that all of that's not doing any good. Listen, no, 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 you're speaking some mysteries. There are some things that are being broken up. There are some things that are being held off from your life. There is mercy that is being afforded to you when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't let anybody ever talk you out of praying in the Holy Ghost by diminishing its impact, its effectiveness, the power that it has in our life. Don't ever let anybody think you that prayer, make you think that prayer is not efficacious. Prayer changes things. It really does. And, and the devil can make you feel like your prayer is not doing anything. And if he can make you believe that, he'll stop you from praying. And you have to ask yourself sometimes, what do I really believe about prayer? If you believe that prayer is necessary for God's guidance in your life, if you believe that prayer is necessary for the, for the wisdom of God for your life, for God's divine protection in your life, for his blessings over your life, then you'll never let the devil talk you out of praying. The devil is not afraid of preaching, but he is afraid of prayer that backs preaching. All revival, all revival, all revival that has ever happened in the world has 
come out of the seedbed of prayer. It begins with prayer. There's no real secret. You, you can't just advertise and manufacture revival. You have to get in touch with God. When you pray, when God's people pray, when, when he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and pray and pray, you stand on the, on the periphery of being able to step into an incredible, incredible blessing from God. Well, as you know, I'm teaching in the dream series and uh, I'm going to look at a foundational text this evening, just one particular verse in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7. And the, the notice this word, it said, ye ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? And then it goes on to say in verse 8 here that this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. And it talks about a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. It's talking about how just sometimes a, a, a small thing that a person will start whispering in your ear can mess your life up. So I want you to notice that verse 7, you ran well, who hindered you from obeying the truth? Because I'm talking in this session about the, the dream series, Walk It Out. You got to walk your dream out. You got to walk this thing out. You can't just dream a dream. You got to walk it out. It has to be walked out. Uh, so you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Uh, uh, another version uh, says that you were running so very well. Who bumped into you and caused you to lose stride? And Paul is, is, is asking the church at Galatia that about their Christian faith, that you were on the right track. You started out off all, all right, and somewhere down the line, you got off track. Have you ever met with people and you see that they got off track somewhere? You realize that this is not the way they were raised? This is not the way, and, and you see, we see a whole generation that's off track now. And you, you have to ask yourself the question, you ran well, now who, who messed you up in your thinking? I, I like the way that it reads in the amplified version of the scripture. Notice it says, you were running the race nobly. Who has interfered in, hindered, and stopped you from your heeding and following the truth? And I want you to notice this. It doesn't say what, it says who. You were running the race nobly. Who, who has interfered? Who? If you ever get thrown off track, it's not a program, it's not an ideology, it's not a philosophy, it's a who. It's a two-legged human being. It's somebody that messes you up. If your children come in talking crazy one day, it's a who. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, it, it wasn't just a, 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 a thing. It was not just a spirit. It's, it is a who. It's a who. It is a who. Who did shinda you? Who, who messed you up? Who talked to you and got you uh, off track? I can give anybody directions to heaven. Turn right and keep straight. It doesn't matter where you are, those directions will get you there. Turn right, keep straight. It'll get you to heaven. Now, we have a problem keeping straight. Uh, we don't have a problem dreaming the dream. We have a problem walking the dream out once we've dreamed it to walk it out. You, you have to walk this thing out on a daily basis. This thing is a daily walk. You know, blessed is the man that walketh not, walketh not. This is, this is a practice of what you do daily. Victory does not come in a day, it comes daily. You'll find your victory in, in the daily things that you do, whatever is in your daily routine. You, you, you'll notice that. Much of what we seek in life uh, that is meaningful, that is significant, may I tell you something? The very things that you seek in life that are meaningful and significant are just beyond the edge of your comfort zone. They are just beyond the edge of your comfort zone. And most people don't get to it because they don't like to be uncomfortable. They don't like to be uncomfortable. Listen, if, if anybody is going to help you you don't just want yes men around you that just always singing your praises. May I tell you this? Can I, can I let you in on a little secret? If everybody around you who knows you is doing nothing but singing your praise, you are surrounded by enemies. Amen. 
because all of us have some area and dimension of our lives that we need to get better in. And if people are only celebrating all of the good stuff that you're doing and not telling you the stuff that you need to be working on to help make you better, that's really not a friend. A best friend is a friend that brings out the best in you. They're not the person that just tells you the stuff that you want to hear. You need somebody in your life that'll tell you about yourself. Now, I don't mean that they shouldn't be putting you down all the time. And every time you see them, you know, they, you know it's something like, well, what is it now? <laughs> it, it shouldn't be that kind of thing. You, you ought to be able to celebrate the, the, the good things that, 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 that you do. I, I wouldn't want people in my life who don't know how to celebrate me. You need to have friends in your life, family members in your life who know how to celebrate you. Don't be with people who will just tolerate you. You need to be with people who celebrate you. But you also need to be with somebody who loves you enough to tell you the truth about yourself. You honestly do. You don't help people if you're just sweet to them and telling them all of the good things and they need to be rebuked. You know, when somebody needs to pull your coattail and say, wait, 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 just a minute, you have gone too far. You, you need somebody. That's the manifestation of love. Love disciplines. The Lord chastens or chastises those that he loves. And I'm just here to tell you that if your enemies are the first ones to tell you the truth about yourself, you don't have any friends. You need friends in your life that will keep it real with you. I'm talking about that will keep it 100 with you and tell you about yourself. If you didn't do well, they need to tell you, man, you're going to have to fix that up. You know, you know like, girl, I know you didn't wear that out in public. <laughs> I mean, you need somebody to tell you, you know, that sometimes my wife will go out with something and she says, why did you let me, why did you let me go looking like this? And, uh, and, and I'm like, well, I, I didn't notice. I didn't notice. You know, and I'm just telling the truth. Had I known, I would have told her. You know, so, but you have to have people in your life that love you enough to be able to tell you the truth about yourself. And this is, this is one of the reasons. It is because no person, no matter how good we are, no person has the ability to see themselves at all angles. You've got to have people surrounding you to be able to help you to see areas and dimensions of you that you cannot see alone. I can't see my back. I've got to have somebody who is in, in a position who's in, in proximity close to me enough to be able to see my back and tell me if, if I've got something wrong with my back. You, you need people, not merely who, who have your back, you need people who have your heart. And it's all right to have people who are behind you who have your back, but make sure, more importantly than somebody having your back, is you want somebody to have your heart. Whoever has your back needs to have your heart first. They need to have your heart. So when you talk about walking, 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 say walking. You, you're talking of not, not about taking a walk by yourself, but you're talking about walking with somebody. You, you're, you're not taking this walk alone. You, there are other people that God will send to walk the journey with you, at least certain portions of the journey. There are some parts of the journey that nobody can go with you. You have to face certain difficult challenges all by your lonesome self. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There are some things in sickness nobody else can deal with that, that with you. You have to walk those roads all alone. But there are other times that God gives us somebody to be able to walk with us. You know why? Because when you get all busy and you're focused in on one thing, you need somebody who's not focused in on what you're focused in on so they can see other things around you. Here's a principle. Write this down. Focus causes blindness. It causes blindness. If whatever you're focused on, it means that you're going to be blind to other things in the periphery. You're focused in on this. When you have tunnel vision, there's some stuff out here that's going on, and it could be dangerous to you. But because you've got tunnel vision, you need somebody else who's sitting in the car to say, wait, wait just a minute, there's a car coming up on your left side. You need somebody else watching for you because focus always produces blindness. Focus produces blindness. And if you don't have somebody who's walking with you, 
There are all kinds of things that you will miss and you'll put yourself in a very precarious position because you didn't have somebody close enough to you to be able to look out for you and see the things that you cannot see. That's why we have binocular vision, the left eye and the right eye, because both of them see things from a different vantage point. And it is the shifting between the right and the left eye that actually give us depth perception. You would not be able to perceive depth if you only had one eye. So you need the contrast that actually causes the image to adjust so that you can perceive depth. And that helps us to be able to grow. But everything that you really want that is worth having is just outside of the comfort zone. That's why not everybody has the honey in life, to have the sweet life, because the honey, wherever there's honey, there are also bees. And where there are bees, there's a stinger in a tail. And most people are not willing to risk being uncomfortable by being stung by a bee in order to, to get the honey. But there are some of us who have eyed the honey. And we are willing to reach our hands in and risk being stung to get some honey on our fingers and bring it back and put it to our mouths. There are some of us who are willing to go after the honey and risk the stinger in the bee. And let me just say to you that if there is no risk involved in whatever it is that you're trying to go after, it's not worth anything. Anything worth having has a risk involved with it, a risk. The world calls it risk. In the church, we call it faith. And if you don't need any faith to get it, it's not much. If you need no faith to get it, it's not very much at all. If you're not willing to venture out there, you will never find all that you truly desire if you're not willing to walk it out. It's in walking it out, venturing out there that you discover so much in, in life. If you just stay in the same place, I, I can't tell you how much of life you will miss because you never venture out. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. There's an old African proverb that says, no person is born great. Great people become great when others are sleeping. And it is true. You've got to be willing to work when others are not working. Nobody is born great. Great people become great uh, when other folks are sleeping because they are willing to do what other people are not willing to do. Great people are willing to be self-sacrificing. All of them have an incredible discipline in their life. They have a tenacity in them where if somebody tells them no, they don't just take no as a final answer. They say no might mean not now. But sometimes you come back, uh, you know, in two weeks and talk to them again, and, and then you might have to come back another month, and then you might have to wait six months and talk to them again. And at the right timing, at the right time, there are some people that back in high school that you wouldn't give them the time of day. And there are some that you wanted back in high school, and you see them now, and they're jacked up. And you're like, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And then there's some other people, you know, there's some people that are late bloomers. And they didn't look like much in high school, but then they blossom and it's like, bam, what, what, you were in my class? <laughs> so sometimes it's just a matter of timing. It's just a matter of timing. But remember, no person is born great. Great people become great when others are sleeping. When others are sleeping, you got to be willing to do what other people are not willing to do. Great people become great while others are sleeping. And so if you're going to really reach your goals and fulfill your dreams in your life, you have to tolerate the discomfort of leaving your comfort zone. You've got to be willing to do what is uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. Do what is uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. Uh, just like you have to be willing to pray until prayer becomes easy to you, until it becomes a delight. When you first start praying, prayer is great work. It is laborious. But when you have learned the discipline of prayer, prayer becomes a delight. You become refreshed 
strengthen. It calms you down. It, it, it makes you more tolerant. I cannot tell you the incredible benefits that prayer brings into the human life. But it blesses us in an incredible way. See, there's a reason that we call it growing pain. Growing pain. There's a reason that it's called pain. Because you have to be uncomfortable every time that you're going to grow. You're going to be made to feel uncomfortable. It's time to grow through the pain. And when you do take the time to grow through the pain, you will be glad that you did. You really will be glad that you did. Now, in reading the lives of, of so many great people in the world, you will discover that the first victory that they won was over themselves. The first victory that great people win is not over others, it is over themselves. In the same way, leadership is not about leading others. Leadership is about leading yourself in a way that inspires others to follow. When you talk about a leader, it's not about leading people. It's about leading yourself. How are you going to be a leader? You can't lead yourself. It's about leading yourself. First person you have to conquer is yourself. yourself. Self-discipline with all of them, all of the great people in the world always came first. Self-discipline. It takes an incredible discipline. I mean, if you're going to be an Olympic gold medalist, self-discipline has got to be first. I don't care whether it's a great revivalist, self-discipline, somebody that trained themselves to be able to pray. Smith Wigglesworth prayed a tithe of the day, a tithe of the day. What is that, two hours and 40 minutes or whatever? I mean, a tithe of the day. He, he prayed. It takes discipline to do that. You don't just pray two hours and some odd minutes just, just uh, out of, by accident. You do that by discipline. And now discipline means delaying personal gratification because it's, it's going to hurt whenever you discipline yourself. You got to feel the burn and keep on pressing through the burn. You don't quit because you get tired. You quit because you get through. And so here's, here's my uh, suggestion to you. Don't just sit there after you've had a dream. Wake up and begin to walk it out. It's time to just walk it out now. Don't just sit there, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. What is it that I can do toward my dream every day, every day, every day to walk toward that thing? And do you know that there are many, many natural benefits of just walking which have also paralleled with spiritual benefits? And, and I, I just want to take a look here at, uh, at a few benefits of walking, a few benefits. And these are just in the natural. And, and then I, I want to ask the Holy Spirit to give you spiritual insight to be able to discern what is that same benefit to you in a spiritual sense. What is that for you? I pray that he will translate it for you. But, but here's, here's number one. Walking increases your lifespan. It increases your lifespan. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That you can just walk and, and doctors say that your lifespan will be increased just by walking. They said walking more than an hour a day improves life expectancy significantly is what a study showed. Uh, researchers, they looked at 27,738 participants between the ages of 40 and 79 years old over a 13-year period. And surprisingly, they said their lifetime medical cost did not increase even though they lived longer. And so they said an increase in walking time at the population level would bring about a tremendous change in people's health and medical cost, the study uh, concluded. But walking increases your lifespan. It, it, it increases your lifespan. You remember Enoch walked with God and he was not. We walk. We, are, we walk by faith and not by sight. We, we walk. We walk in this thing. We walk. We walk in. Not, not even running. I'm, I'm glad he didn't say running. Because, you know, you get a certain age and, and your joints. Running is murder on your knees and your, you know, some tendons and stuff. You, you know, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, you know, I'm so glad he said walking and not jogging. Walking, just it increases your lifespan. That's number one. Here's number two. Walking wards off diabetes. It wards off diabetes. They said just 30 minutes of walking a day can prevent diseases such as type 2 diabetes. 
uh, looking at both overweight and average weight men and women in a population at high risk for disease uh, is, is what the study showed. And they said, even if you already have diabetes, walking is helpful for you too. It said a mile or more daily cuts your risk of death from all causes in half. Cuts your, the, 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 uh, the, the risk of, of, of death in, in half just by walking. It wards off diabetes, too much sugar in the blood. It, it helps you to be able to walk off that stuff. You see, because the devil anesthetizes us sometimes with sweetness, you know, the way that he is, it's, it's sweet in your mouth, but it turns bitter in your belly. But he lures people with stuff that seems so good. That's what gets us in trouble. That's how he kills us with our diet. Because he makes the stuff that's worse for you taste so good. Wouldn't it be something if, I mean, if there was so much life and, and, and uh, energy in fried chicken? Wouldn't that be a blessing? If, if, if that was, if, if Hagen dazs ice cream was medicine that you had to get at the pharmacy, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? Macaroni and cheese. Wouldn't that be something that they wrote your, uh, 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 you know, wrote you, 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 you go in coughing, sick and everything, and they, they write you out a prescription, the fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, candied yams, <laughs> banana pudding, red velvet cake. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> but walking wards off diabetes. It, it, it extends your life lifespan. It wards off diabetes. Number three, walking keeps your mind sharp. Walking keeps your mind sharp. Now, I've told you this, and if you just think about it, just, just think about it for just a moment. Anything that you let sit goes bad. If you let milk sit, it'll go bad. If you let fruit sit, it'll go bad. If you let meat sit, it'll, it'll go bad. If you let a car sit too long, it'll go bad. If you let your mind sit, it will go bad. If you let your legs sit for too long, it'll go to sleep on you. It, it will go bad. Whatever you let sit will go bad bad. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.